So the first question is staffing of departments. Where are we with police staffing and filling of other jobs such as snowplow operators? Um, numbers I saw were like there was 40% vacancies in some departments. Where mm -hmm. are we on mm -hmm. staffing right now? Have those numbers been improved and what are you doing to improve mm -hmm. staffing numbers? What have you done in your first 100 days? Well, we came into office um, when staffing numbers were very, very low in a number of departments, crisis level, you know, like with the police department, with prosecutors, um, you know, just in accounting and finance. And we have, in these first 100 days, really focused on staffing up. Uh, we've got a long ways to go still, and there are some departments, too, that are digging in and looking at uh, strategies for how we can address those gaps. I mean, we've done other things, um, generally speaking, like with telework, working from home, and um, you know, making it easier for employees you know, to, to do that so that there's more flexibility. But um, we definitely have um, farther to go, but we've made progress. Are you doing a, a kind of like, I know you said telework, are you doing any kind of sign-on bonuses or incentives to anticipate or increasing, boosting the wages mm -hmm. so far in your one, first 100 days? Mm -hmm. Have you done anything like that? We have made salary adjustments and, you know, in the budget that we submitted have included wage increases. Mm -hmm. um, as far as incentives and bonuses, I'm not, um, I mean, that's something, we're looking at everything. Everything's on the table and what we can do. And I don't have anything to report specifically on that piece, but definitely doing what we can to ensure that wages are competitive, um, to ensure that we're keeping, you know, those employees that we have. This is top of mind. Um, far as you know, like if you were to say, I, I know this is a tough barometer because every department's different. But would you say, like, far as those the peak of those vacancy rates, would you say you've made a dent in them, or it's too early to say, or no, we, it's, you know, like it's 100 days. I don't know if we've made a dent so far. I mean, what, what could you say at this point? Yeah, we've made some dents. Okay. Um, like when we look at the municipal attorney's office, for example, um, we have hired attorneys in both, you know, civil and criminal. And we, um, you know, had some big gaps there, and we still have some, and we're working to continue to fill those positions, but that's a department where um, we've made significant progress. And uh, you also said, there, you know, uh, you know, um, on your platform when you were campaigning, um, you wanted to address contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. Where are we on that right now? Well, the municipality has a number of collective bargaining agreements with, you know, a number of um, our unions, and so that's ongoing, right? And um, as far as specifically addressing um, our budget, for example, includes a wage, a proposed wage increase for the operators. Um, we know that um, wages for snowplow operators really lag here at the municipality, and it's hard for us to be competitive, right? Why not go work for the state or somewhere else where you can get more pay? So that's um, an area where we've really focused on, and um, you know there are other wage increases that will need to happen, and we're we're taking them, we're working through methodically. I guess if 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 there is um, a summary of these first 100 days, I'd say, um, you know, we've made progress, we've built a team, we have addressed issues, and it's a long list of things we need to do, and we are going to continue to proceed. And, you know, there's more work to do, and we're, we're doing it, and um, there'll be more progress updates as we go along. And as you know, um, winter's coming. And, yeah. <laughs> and you know, you know what uh, the Bronze administration went through last year. Um, you know, you, you know, I know this was a goal of yours mm -hmm. to improve the operation yes. of getting snow removed. And during a press conference in September, you kind of said, like, you know, little is likely to change this year. Mm -hmm. But are we going to be better or worse than last year, or the same? And if we are going to be better, why are we going to be better? Even mm -hmm. though you said changes are likely to be made. Yeah. I believe we are going to be better off, and we're going to be better off because we have a plan, and we have engaged stakeholders, you know, um, including like the school district, um, the state DOT, so that we all know what the plan is and what we're going to be working towards and what resources we have. Yes, it takes a while to replace out your, you know, big pieces of equipment. Um, one bright 
patch is that as um, you know, we were going through closing the books for uh, 2022 and you know, taking a look at accounts and finances, there was money, 3.75 million in a fleet replacement account. So we were able to place an order for some equipment. But it's gonna take time and um, voter support, right, to replace out our fleet in a way where, you know, we've got, um, you know, we've got some really old equipment that's likely to break down this year, but we're gonna continue to make progress in that area. As I mentioned, um, you know, we have increased operator wages, right? And it's gonna take some time to be fully competitive, but we are committed to making those steps. And then communication, you know, we ordered um, GPS devices, right, to put on heavy equipment. That's something that, you know, the public has been asking for for a while. And so that's a change. And we're gonna continue to um, communicate with the public and make sure the public knows where to go to get information and knows what to expect. And um, we'll communicate and work with the state DOT and the school district and other stakeholders so that, again, people know what to expect. And that's a huge step forward. The Browns administration last year, um, and I think they might've done it the year before, um, you know, he was, his administration said they were going to contract out snow removal services because you never know when you're going to get a, mm -hmm. I, I think they call it a snowmageddon, snow, snowmageddon, I'm, I'm from mm -hmm. San Diego, this is not a term oh. you use, <laughs> um, a snowmageddon, um, that's what they did. Are you going to continue that, contracting out some snow removal services, or is that something you guys are like, no, we want to do this fully in-house? Well, you know, we're continuing to assess resources and what we have and we've been you know focused on our fleet and on our our operators um, I know that when we had the the snowmageddon you know there were um, complexities that arose too where we were in that situation with having to pay a whole lot of money and it was very competitive and so we, we want to avoid that situation I mean the municipality has a series of service areas right um, we've got rural road service areas, local road service areas. There are a number of private contractors in those areas of the municipality that clear the snow from the roads, like out in Eagle River, Sabursa, right? Is um, it's not out of the municipality's maintenance and operations department. They kind of they do their own thing, and so that can be confusing because we already do have a mix of uh, private contractors that clear snow from roads. And you know we're always looking for ways in which we can work together and collaborate and leverage what we have. Um, right now, I think we're in a good position. But again, you know, as we look at these issues and tackle these problems, everything's on the table. Okay. And now in September, you kind of said um, I shouldn't say you kind of said you did say <laughs> you and your staff. Um, you said that you were looking at April of uh, doing a, a ballot levy to raise mm -hmm. funds for snow removal equipment. Mm -hmm. And as you know, um, the business community also wants to float up a mm -hmm. proposal to increase the sales tax. And you kind of said as your first 100 days, you want to make Anchorage an affordable place to live. But with mm -hmm. these two ballot propositions, people are going to be saying, hey, if these both pass, sure. our, our cost of living is going to go up. So what would you mm -hmm. say to people when it kind of seems like the city is saying we need to raise more money to make this a livable, mm -hmm. to make this, I should say, a livable place a more lively place to live, a more attractive place to live. I mean, what would you say mm -hmm. to those people who are concerned who are already living right. month to month? Well, it's very important for the municipality to have a plan and a structure for replacing assets. And when we don't do that and, you know, we get a snowmageddon and suddenly all our, um, you know, pieces of equipment are breaking down and need engine replacements, you're paying through the nose, right? Um, you need it right away and you're gonna to pay top dollar. But if we can step back and have a replacement schedule so we are avoiding those crisis points, I mean, ultimately that's going to save taxpayers money, right? I mean, as a homeowner, we wanna make sure that we don't wait until the last minute to repair a roof, otherwise, you know, the issues compound and the costs go up. So um, taking that view of, of the municipality and taking care of our assets is really important, and I believe in the long run it will save money. We've got you know, we've got decisions to make as voters, and you know what's important to us, and you know how do we want how do we want to proceed, and what kind of community do we want to live in? Okay, and, and then something else that's been you know big on your agenda, big on your radar since you've been mayor, 
um, you know, public safety was a top priority for you guys, and you already mm -hmm. know what's going on with the officer-involved shootings mm -hmm. and transparency. Um, but far as like the staffing of the department, where are we on those wages and filling those vacancies for those departments? Or I should say for that department. Yeah, um, you know, and that's a department that really is understaffed and we know that it's a tough job and it's made all the more difficult when we're short staffed and I think you know we're at around 60 you know sworn officer vacancies and that's very significant and um, and I appreciate you know that 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 means other officers have to pick up extra shifts mm -hmm. too and it, a tough job is tougher so we are looking really closely at what we can do you know, to be more competitive, to keep people here. And, and we know that, you know, the livability of our community factors into those decisions as well for people to stay. And we lose a lot of our public safety officers, both police and fire, after the five-year mark, right? Um, have you been able to do anything so far to make those jobs more attractive? I know you said in the budget, you know, boosting wages. I, does, that, mm -hmm. does that include the police department? Would that include that department? Well, um, and a wage increase, um, you know, was already implemented for the police very recently. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm talking with the chief about and the municipal manager about, you know, what can we do? I mean, I know like the pension conversation comes up as a retention tool. And, you know, that's something that for the most part needs to be addressed at the state level. Mm -hmm. But we're looking at everything. And, um, you know, decisions about whether to stay in a community I mean, also, you know, that you're looking at, is it um, affordable to, to live here as far as, can I get a house or the school's good? And so those are bigger picture issues as well that, that we know impact those decisions for people to stay. You know, kind of like using a, a chicken and the egg scenario here, but mm -hmm. do you kind of see the officer involved shootings and the way, you know, you know whether, you know, it's fair or not, the way mm -hmm. officers you know, they'll get blasted on social media, the, the videos out there, pictures are out there, people are talking about it. Do you find that makes it harder for you guys to hire police officers? And maybe that's something that also needs mm -hmm. to be addressed going forward so it can aid in hiring officers? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we are taking a close look at m many aspects of our public safety departments. And that includes, you know, a review of um, specific incidents a third party review as well as a third party review of our use of force, training, supervision, um, tactics. And so there's more information, you know, to come on some of that. And and I don't I I can't say for sure, right, how those um, incidents are impacting retention and recruitment. I know these are hard jobs and we ask a lot of our public safety officers, of our police officers. I mean, they have to deal with folks on the very worst days of their lives, and they, you know, are, um, they, they're operating in very stressful environments. And um, I want to ensure that they have what they need to do their jobs in the best way they can to, to be safe and to ensure that, you know, they have those supports and adequate training and so we are talking and looking closely at the information we have and seeking more information and we'll be sharing more with the public as um, we learn more. Okay and you also you know as part of your plan you said you wanted to address a pro housing plan to mm -hmm. make Anchorage more affordable. Yep. Where are we on that plan right now? What movement have we made on that? Yeah more to come very soon on that. We've got a draft plan and with some um, specific actions. And I know this is a priority of the assembly as well. And we are aware of um, some of the actions that some of the members you know, wanna take and think are important. We are working with members of the um, industry from builders and developers and other stakeholders to really figure out you know, how can we move forward? We need more housing at all price points in our community. And um, it's key to being able to attract and retain people and so I'm excited about that conversation that we'll be having soon. Okay and you also had a, a plan for to help with child care costs. Where does that stand right now? 
Yeah, so the voters approved um, dedicating the cannabis tax revenues towards uh, childcare and pre-K, and um, this is the first year that we'll be able to, or this budget cycle is the first budget cycle, and so we are proposing that those funds be spent to stabilize the industry um, to the extent we can. It's a limited fund, and also implement you know some new programs, and so that will be um, coming up into the forefront as we have the budget conversations and we look at those proposals. Um, that um, fund is kind of unique because there'll be an executive director, there's a board, and so um, I'm looking forward to those conversations as well, and hopeful that we'll end up in a place where we can really leverage those funds and maybe braid it with potential state and federal funding and really come up with something that will have a positive impact. Okay, and you know, a, a plan of yours, and I remember you even talked about this when mm -hmm. you were on the assembly, um, but part of your plan is you want to have a year-round shelter system. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I believe the assembly, they approved funding to get it through, I think it's just for end of April. I could be wrong with that. Don't worry about that. Um, but as far as your year-round shelter plan, because some of that, like the salt, salt waste facilities, depending mm -hmm. upon what the state, state legislature can appropriate. Appropriate, um, but far as a year-round shelter plan, what are your plans for that? Where are we right now in mm -hmm. developing that plan? Yeah, and it's important to keep in mind too that shelter is an emergency response, mm -hmm. and it's not a solution to homelessness. But we are a cold weather community, and we've got to have a place for people to go. Um, we can't have folks sleeping on the streets and parks and in trails, and so we have um, been focused on ensuring that we've got a number of beds both uh, congregate at the SWS um, facility and non-congregate you know the hotel rooms and um, I see that as you know this is something we've had to do pretty quickly and down the road I am optimistic that we're going to be able to focus more on connecting folks with services and getting them into housing because emergency shelter is very expensive and it doesn't solve the problem but we've you know we've got to have it right now and um, I will say you know there's been you know some real good positive activity on getting people into housing I know that um, you know question that comes up I'm just going to address it as people say well what about those people who don't want housing and shelter well my view is 90 percent of people do and um, you know want to get out of that situation and that 10 percent right includes um, oftentimes those folks who are engaging in criminal activity so let's get the 90 percent connected with services and um, and then we can i'm not saying we put off dealing with any we should always address and we are committed to addressing any criminal activity but um, i don't think as much about um, you know that that 10 percent right and really focused on let's get these folks who want to get out of that situation off the streets and into housing and along the way we'll deal with that 10 percent but would you say we're at a point right now where we do have a year-round shelter plan or yes. is it kind of still in the work no we do oh, okay we do yep okay great Okay, yeah, that was perfect because I have had one uh -huh. less. Okay, so let's, let's so I'll make this a two-part question so you sure. can answer. You can do a two okay. for one here. Okay, so far at this point in your first hundred days, and I know mm -hmm. it's a subjective. What mm -hmm. grade would you give yourself, and what, and do you feel like in your first one hundred days you have made Anchorage a more vibrant mm -hmm. place to live? I know that's a short. I know that's a tough obstacle, but mm -hmm. go go for it. Ah, <laughs> uh, the grade question. I'll come back to that one or maybe I won't. And I'm gonna say that, you know, we came in at a time when there are a lot of challenges and we have focused on stabilizing the municipality and getting a hold of our finances, um, staffing up, and, you know, building a team, building a team that can continue to tackle these challenges. And so from my perspective, we are on track with uh, what we said we would do in this um, period. And again, that's focused on building the team and stabilizing the municipality and producing a plan for this winter for emergency shelter, for snow plowing. The next step, as you mentioned, will be you know, focusing on housing and really building out our future. But at this point, um, I feel comfortable and proud of the efforts of the team. And um, 
looking forward to as well the next 100 days because um, it's a long list of things we need to do and we are just going to proceed down that list. Okay, and so do you give yourself a grade? I don't really like grades, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> would, you say you're, would you say you're above a C average? <laughs> um, I am pleased with where we're at. It's a lot of work. I'm grateful to all the municipal employees who work so hard every day to serve our community. They are truly the um, most important asset that we have. And there is, there is so much work to do and building this team is critical and I just am really grateful to everyone who serves and is committed to doing this work.